introductions to our next bout. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is scheduled for four rounds and it's in a welterweight division. The referee is Al Lobianco. And now, boxing fans, introducing the principals. First, in the blue corner, wearing the solid black trunks. He weighed in at an even 145 pounds. This young man is undefeated in three professional bouts with two knockouts. From Mount Vernon, New York, ladies and gentlemen, here is Larry Barnes. Barnes. And his opponent in the red corner, wearing the black trunks. He tipped in at an even 148 pounds. This young man, he too is undefeated in three professional bouts with two knockouts. A native of Madison, Wisconsin. And now residing in the Big Apple of New York City, ladies and gentlemen, here is Kurt Tiger Exum. Exum. Kurt Exum, who had 20 amateur fights. A Golden Gloves champion in Wisconsin is a graduate of the University of Wisconsin and plans to attend law school next fall. Well, that's admirable, Sam, for a guy to be able to box and attend law school. The same as Seamus McDonough. He's supported himself by boxing and going to St. John's. But I want to tell you, if he's in with a Frank Caserta fighter, he's in with a well-schooled fighter. That's a mark of a Frank Caserta fighter. Works hard with them in the gym. Exum's last fight was in June in New Jersey. Won a decision over Mark Farley. So a six-month layoff for Kurt Exum. You know, I hate to see two undefeated kids go at it so early in their career. They could have waited a little while. Barnes looks real quick with that right hand. A little short with a jab. Barnes is an amateur, likes like to mix it up a lot. You know, uh, Sam, he looks a little too muscular to me. Seems to me like he's a little tight with his punches. Both fighters have done well slipping the other's punches thus far. The way Bonds is walking in, I don't think he has too much respect for Exum. He doesn't think he can fight him. Exum with a lot of movement. Perhaps trying to frustrate Larry Barnes. Barnes missing a lot, taking some wild swings. Hey, stop pushing! Hey, you notice he's a little tight with his punches, yeah. Sam. Those muscles get any bigger, he won't be able to punch at all. He won't be able to stra straighten that arm all the way. But he looks strong, Gil, and oh. if he connects. Well, weightlifters all look strong, you know. That doesn't mean they can fight. There's a good left. Yeah. Exum needs to keep moving, stay away from that power of Barnes. He has to nail Barnes with a couple of punches to make him respect him, uh, Sam. Because right now, Barnes is just walking in. Barnes chasing, Exum moving. Right hand got in by Larry Barnes. Exum ha hasn't landed much. A couple of right hands in close. Well, he got nailed early, Sam. And he's showing Barnes a lot of respect. The left hand down won't help him if Barnes lands that right hand. Good left hook by Barnes. Tries to follow. Another one lands. Exum trying to bounce away. Sam, do you think we're going to get into the second round we of might. this fight? It That's looks good, Gil. Right here. End of the first round. Sam Rosen and Gil Clancy ringside here at Madison Square Garden's Felt Forum. This is fight night at the Felt Forum. They forgot the stool in Kurt Exum's corner. I'm surprised. That's Al Shevlin working in the corner. He's an experienced corner man. <laughs> I guess it was one of those things I thought it was you and you thought it was me and nobody did it, right? Barnes came out momentarily as a southpaw. Now he's back to his right-handed stance. Press the attack from the 
the opening bell. He's got a quick left hand, but he's missed a lot with it. Punch is too wide, Sam. And he's looking to land that big punch all the time. Doesn't set the guy up with the jab at all. Exum wobbly legs here, holding on. Got hit with a quick left hook. Good left hook, Sam, yes. But every punch that Bonds throws is a bomb. No setup punches at all. Exum running and not throwing any punches to keep Barnes off him. I think it's just a matter of time here. I think that Exum is hoping that Bonds gets a little tired. You know, those big muscle guys tend to get tired. Exum keeps dropping those hands way down low, and if Barnes gets in close enough with those short arms and lands, he hurts Exum. And Exum landed a couple of pretty good punches himself, Sam. Good left hook, good straight right hand. Starting to step in. Still coming up short with that jab. Sam, we always tell fighters if you can't hit a guy with a jab, you're not going to hit him with anything. And Barnes is just forgetting all about boxing, just walking and slugging. Barnes at 147 pounds is short, has those short arms. He's got to get inside. Again, the big swing and a miss. All right, wait, let's head out, Exxon. Let's go. Nice to play. Come on, keep your head up, guys. Right. Barnes is really looking for the big one. Big punch. He's air conditioning in the I'm building, Sam. As long as Exxon moves to the right, Barnes can't touch him. He wants to escape, now all he has to do is walk out to the right. Barnes continuing on the offensive through the second round. And if he doesn't run out of energy from those big swings, he should be in good shape. Exum hasn't done all that much. Doesn't seem to have the punch to uh, hurt Barnes at all. Kurt Exum. Graduate of the University of Wisconsin from Madison. Fought 20 times as a pro, a Golden Gloves champion in Wisconsin. And 3 0 with two knockouts as a pro. This program is authorized by Madison Square Garden Productions, Incorporated solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this event, including the imposition of a charge for viewing the program without the express written consent of Madison Square Garden Productions, Incorporated, is prohibited. Our last fight night at the Felt Forum for 1988. And we were to have Michael Alajade, Buddy McGirt, and Edwin Rosario on the card. Alajade had eye surgery. McGirt came down with the flu, and Rosario got appendicitis. And we wish them all get well soon. We're sorry they're not on the card. You know, and they say things happen in threes. I mean, it sure looks like it. Good left hook. Oh, man, Barnes. Good right hand answered by Kurt Exum. That's the first snappy jab that I've seen Barnes throw in the fight. Again, the combinations. Barnes starting to land a little more frequently here. The Exum doesn't use the jab either, Sam. I mean, when the guy's walking in, he can snap that left hand Absolutely. out, get a little bit off balance. He just, he's looking to counter when Barnes misses. With the right hand, that's about all he's thrown. Trying to pick off that left hand and tie up Larry Barnes. And now Bond shifted south for a minute. Just trying to give him a different look to sneak his way in, I think. Right? Also a sign of frustration, Sam. How so? What do you mean? Well, well why change? Why change was working for you? He's winning the fight. He doesn't have to change anything. If anybody has to change, it's Exum. Good left hook again. Rocks Exum to the ropes. Again, his legs wobble. Sam, but you know, we mentioned about these big muscled guys. I mean, he hit him with his best shot, and really not that much happened. Couldn't have hit him harder than that. Needs to hit him with more than one. Oh, good right hand 
wobbles him again. Exum rocked to the ropes, bounced back and held on. Well, at University of Wisconsin taught him something. He's smart enough to hold. A lot of guys forget that. And some real good fighters forget to hold when they get hurt. Exum doing a lot of holding here in the third round. This is a scheduled four-rounder. They're welterweights in the ring. And Barnes landing more frequently with big punches. But it's one at a time. He's loading up for the one big shot. Well, when he throws that one big punch, he, he can't come back because his weight is going off his feet. You have to put them together, and you don't have to throw every punch like a home run ball. Now, now Exum, Exum. yes, yeah, switch to southpaw. But meanwhile, he gets tagged with a left hook a couple of times. Bianco tells Kurt Exum to watch his head. He's been ducking down. They've been close to banging heads. Time winding down in round three. It's January, and Home Sports Entertainment snows you on. Fourth and final round of this welterweight bout. I've got Barnes 3-0, Gil. How about you? I do too, Sam. Now, what would you say to Exum in the corner? Would you say, hey, you got to go out and fight this guy, back him up and get him out of there where you can't win? Or would you say, hey, let's survive, try to survive and fight another day? I think he's lost it by now. I don't know if he, if he believes he can hurt Larry Barnes. That's the problem. If he believes it, I think you got to go for it. Wading in, right both fighters a little off balance. The Exum hasn't done a thing in this fight to stop Barnes from continually coming in. The few times he has hit Barnes with a clean punch, absolutely nothing's happened to him. Can't move him at all. He throws that little right hand uppercut. He's landed that a few times, but not an effective punch at all. No jab. Good work by Barnes jabbing his way in that time. And then Exum tied him up. See, that's the one punch he's relying on, Sam. He's trying to land that right-hand uppercut. See, Exum, I think, would have had a chance in this fight had he had a jab and, and used it as Barnes was coming in. Doesn't use that left hand at all. As I say, he just looks to land a big punch after Bonds misses, which is quite often. Barnes lands the left hook. And Exum holds on one more time. The punch before the left hook, Bonds threw it from across the street. Everybody could see that punch coming. That time a combination, the right hand scored for Larry Barnes. Some redness over the left eye of Kurt Exum. He's loading up for a right hand. It's the only hand he uses. Doesn't use a left hand at all. No knockdown. No knockdown. All right, buys him a few seconds anyhow, Sam. Pretty late in the fight as Kurt Exum doesn't have much that he can call on to slow down Larry Barnes. If I was Exum, I'd stop moving to my right, kill the clock, and get out of there in one piece. Barnes, who has the short arms, and is usually fighting taller opponents, I think needs to work more to the body, Gil. He absolutely, he has to use the left hand to set the guy up and punch to the body. End of the fight. Larry Barnes, he looks like a winner. We'll be back with a decision in just a moment. Several figures in board to add to Harp. Larry Barnes, looks like a winner to me, Gil. How about to you? If he doesn't win the fight, Sam, there isn't a Santa Claus. <laughs> Ed Darien, he's not Santa Claus, is he? he Ladies has the decision. and gentlemen, all three judges, Victor Suarez, 
Carol Castellano, and Jack DeFaris. Each score four zip. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and for his fourth straight win in his many pro bouts, Larry Barnes. Barnes. Larry Barnes. And let's hear it one more time. A local favorite from Mount Vernon. Solid performance by Barnes. Still early in his pro career. Fourth pro fight. 4-0 Four with two knockouts. Man with big muscles. Kept up the pressure on Kurt Exum throughout the fight. Just too strong for Exum, Sam. But I just don't like those big muscle guys. I think they should keep him off the heavy bag, keep him off the weights. Try to get a little more hand speed. Larry Barnes, a winner. We'll be back with more Fight Night at the Felt Forum in just a moment. It takes a lot of people to run an Air Force, and we have the best. Start the new year with a good card. Two of the fighters I mentioned who couldn't appear on this fight night at the Felt Forum are scheduled January the 12th. James Buddy McGirt, the former junior welterweight champion of the world, and Edwin Rosario, the former lightweight champion of the world, will be 